In a crucial development towards preventing atrocities against the SCST communities, a three-judge bench of the Supreme Court today recalled its direction in uh, the March 20th, 2018 verdict. At that time, violent protests erupted across the country. At least nine people also lost their lives. All of this against virtually diluted provisions of arrest under the Scheduled Caste, Scheduled Tribes Act. This means that the ban on automatic arrest in cases under SCST Prevention of Atrocities Act of 1989 and the need for sanction before arrest linked to the violation of the law, they stand withdrawn. A preliminary inquiry will no longer be required for registering of an FIR. The ruling comes as a huge relief for the government as well, which had requested the top court to withdraw its order. The three-judge bench, consisting of Justices Arun Mishra, M.R. Shah and B.R. Gawai, in its ruling contended that the struggles of the scheduled tribe and scheduled caste communities are still not over in the country. The bench said SCSTs still face untouchability, abuse and are being socially outcast. The top court there further adding that the constitution provides for the protection of SCSTs under Article 15, but they still face social abuse and continue to be discriminated against. Dealing with the misuse of the provisions of the act and lodging of false cases, the bench said it is not due to the caste system, but due to human failure. Actually, today this matter listed before the uh, Supreme Court and the, for, for, for judgment. And this is the item, uh, co item number 1501. And this is the great victory of the government of India. Why did the government of India file the review petition before this honorable court? And finally, court passed the order today. And court said they STP, ST people are deprived from thousands of years. They all are addressed as a horizon today. And this is the total discrimination, uh, discrimination and happen in the across of the country. And finally, honorable division three judges bench. Why? Because earlier judgment is a two judges bench judgment and finally honorable supreme court three judges bench passed the order it's a landmark order so what exactly will be the significance of this decision by the supreme court? actually this decision related to the ssp whenever the uh, fire rested against the atrocity act then the honorable court interfere intervene the uh, the act especially act and honorable supreme court said ki whenever the uh, fire is rested the police do not have a power to immediately arrest the person. First, SSP rank officer will investigate the issue, then person will be arrested. This is the main issue. So will it empower the SCSP uh, community across the country? Yes, yes, definitely. This is the landmark judgment for the landmark victory of the government of India, and this is the landmark victory of the all STSC people of this country. I also want to give the Supreme Court to the Supreme Court, and I also want to give the Prime Minister to the Prime Minister, that the people का मामला था उसको जो बीच में डाइल्यूट करने का काम किया गया था उसको जो है सुप्रीम उसको प्रधानमंत्री ने जो है उसी को क्या कहते हैं कैबिनेट से पास करके कानून बनाया और सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने उसके ऊपर में मोहर लगाने का काम किया सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने शायद अपना ओपिनियन नहीं दिया है कि भाई जिनके ऊपर एट्रोसिटी एक्ट लगा है उनको अरेस्ट करने की आवश्यकता है और बाद में इसकी जांच आगे हो सकती है अगर कंप्लेनेंट अगर एट्रोसिटी एक्ट लगाने की मांग करता है मेरे ऊपर जाति के नाम पर अन्याय हुआ इसी तरह की भूमिका वाला लगता है तो जिनके ऊपर एट्रोसिटी लगाए उनके ऊपर कार्रवाई होनी चाहिए ये सुप्रीम कोर्ट का फैसला तो सही फैसला है well, after those massive protests that we saw following the March 20th verdict from the Supreme Court, the court, this time a three-judge bench, has decided to undilute the judgment. The chances of misuse do exist with the provisions and without the provisions. Now the question is, eventually over a period of time, will this law be used as a crutch for the Dalit community or is this absolutely essential for a community that has been facing discrimination all along? Is this the only hope for the Dalits now? Let's start talking about this. Uh, Advocate Samir Chaudhary here with me in the studio along with Dr. Kaushal Pawar. She is a Dalit activist. Mr. Gopal Krishna Agarwal is a BJP spokesperson. Mr. Desh Ratan Nigam, political analyst, joining me from Delhi. Advocate Tawseef Khan, again a political analyst. BD Nakhvi, political analyst, will be joining me shortly. Uh, in fact, uh, from Lucknow. Thank you all very much for being with me. Mr. Gopal Krishna Agarwal, I want to start with you first. Sir. How do you see the reversal in what the Supreme Court said back in 2018 uh, and what it said today? What's your take? The government uh, view is concerned 
because when the earlier order was play, uh, passed reverse diluting the SCST Act, the government had come out with an ordinance to protect the uh, SCST's right and uh, reverse the dilution. That was one ordinance that the government had brought just to uh, reverse the dilution. So I think today's uh, Supreme Court order vindicates what the government has thought and what Supreme Court also says that at present the status of SCST Act requires protection and that is what the stand of our government is. We are for the Dal protection of the Dalits, for, we are for the protection of backward classes, we are protection of the weaker sections of the society economically, politically or socially. Those sections require handholding by the government. You see all our schemes, whether they are of financial inclusion, whether they are of protection through OBC commission, set, uh, giving a constitutional status to the OBC commission, all these are for uh, and uh, giving reservation to the uh, 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 economically weaker sections from the general category. We are working for the last mile connectivity. Those people who have been excluded from the development process by the vested interest or uh, political interest or vote bank politics, etc., they have to be included. That uh, is required and that is the need of the hours and uh, we welcome the judgment by the Supreme Court. Uh, okay. Which has vindicated and you know, surprisingly, the, uh, thank you for the opening the statement there, uh, Mr. Gopal Krishna Agarwal. But you know, surprisingly, there have been no political reactions to this today. Neither any big minister from the ruling uh, BJP has come out hailing the Supreme Court's uh, verdict, nor have we had leaders like Mayavati, the BSP Supremo, putting out even a single tweet on social media talking about this. The situation was completely different in 2018, in March of that year. Uh, Dr. Kaushal Pawar, I want to ask you at this point in time, what does this mean? You know, there are two sides to a coin. When we talk about an act like this, which gives suddenly power to the Dalits, it's essentially empowering them uh, to take charge uh, and battle uh, decades of uh, discrimination that they've been facing. But on the other side, you also see this could be a crutch in the long run. So, is the uh, reversal of the SC order the right way ahead? First of all, I would like to thank the Supreme Court for the Supreme Court. It is a good way to increase the Dalit people today. It is a good way to increase the Dalit people today. It was a good way to increase the Dalit people today. It was a good way to increase the Dalit people today. सोशल रिफॉर्मर रहे उनका जो मोमेंट था उससे समाज में एक बीच में बदलाव आया लेकिन आप देखिए इन दिनों लगातार बच्चों की हत्या कर दी जाती है शव को निकालने नहीं दिया जाता मतलब इन हमनेटी आप इसके लिए कोई शब्द मेरे पास नहीं है इतना घृणा स्पद मतलब पता नहीं इतनी घृणा कहाँ से लाते हैं ये जिस तरीके का सनेरियो है अगर सुप्रीम कोर्ट आज इसके ऊपर डिसीजन दे रही है ओबियसली हमारे लिए स्वागत योग्य है लेकिन सवाल बड़ा ये है कि क्या ये सही मनसा है सरकार की या जिस तरीके से सरकार ने इसके ऊपर पहले सुप्रीम कोर्ट के माध्यम से एक तरह से उसको डल्यूट करने की कोशिश की अब फिर दोबारा से फिर फेवर हुआ बिल्कुल मतलब हम सरकार के भी एक तरह से इस मुद्दे पे आभार व्यक्त करते हैं कि उन्होंने कम से कम लेकिन अब सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने तो अपना काम कर दिया अब ये सरकारों के ऊपर है कि वो इसको किस तरीके से इम्प्लीमेंट करते हैं और कितना इसको यूज करते हैं दलित्स के लिए मैं बस इतना ही कहना चाहती हूँ कि आप ये देखिए कि जिस आधार पे आप ये कहते हैं कि इसका गलत इस्तेमाल किया गया क्या आंकड़ा हमारे पास है दूसरी बात इतनी इट्रोसिटी होने के बावजूद भी क्या सरकार के पास कोई ऐसा आंकड़ा है आज तक भी कि उन्होंने किसी को पनिश किया हो कोई जेल में हो डिस्क्रिमिनेशन होने की डिस्क्रिमिनेशन बेहेव करने की वजह से अगर मैं एक दो दिन का ही उदाहरण लूँ आज भवानी जो डीएम साहब हैं उन्होंने भी वही एक्ट किया है कितने लोग जो सरेआम जो इस तरीके से एट्रोसिटी एक्ट करते हैं तो सरकार की जिम्मेदारी है लोकल गवर्नमेंट की जिम्मेदारी है कि वो उसको पनिश करें लेकिन हमारे पास कोई आंकड़ा इस तरीके से दिखाई नहीं ये ये बहुत ज़रूरी बात है हमारे पास आंकड़ों की बहुत कमी है इस पे भी हम आगे बात करेंगे, but I want to bring you in, Mr. Desh Ratan Nikam. The ground realities versus these provisions. We are also on the eve of Mahatma Gandhi's 150th birth anniversary. As I mentioned earlier, he made it his life's mission to fight for the rights of the downtrodden, to combat untouchability. He himself, in fact, was stopped. In fact, today I was reading up. He was stopped 
at a temple down south because he had visited foreign land. He wasn't allowed. So discrimination which has existed in our society, do you think this is something which is absolutely <coughs> essential? See, uh, so far as Mahatma Gandhi is concerned, uh, I have read two views of Mahatma Gandhi on the concept of this atrocities, discrimination and untouchability. When he wrote in Varna Kindred language, he wrote something else and when he wrote in English, he wrote something else. It is a matter of record, but I am not getting into all that. We know that discrimination and atrocities hmm. against scheduled caste is taking place and also against scheduled tribes at the ground level. So hence, the, this government, existing government brought these amendments and those amendments have been upheld by the government, uh, by the Supreme Court. And uh, one thing is to be very, very right. clear is that uh, once these uh, amendments were brought in, the entire political issue which people were using it as a political tool became dead. So th therefore you s don't see any kind of a reaction today because that issue was already taken. It was a big issue at that point of time and government took appropriate steps and That's it was right. all likelihood that uh, I was expecting this kind of a judgment based on the facts, circumstances and law. Now at the same time, you know, once the these amendments have come in, rightly so, now the duty of the court and the burden and responsibility on the court becomes far more important to see that there is no misuse of this law because there is there are provisions because once suppose a, a false FIR is for, filed against a person then it becomes the duty of the court now to see that uh, it is not a false FIR the uh, accused has a right to go to the higher courts for quashing of the FIR he can also you know ask for a discharge the person can also you know bring uh, various other kind of applications before the criminal court. So now since the inquiry right. is not to be done for before arrest, so all these duties now shifts to the courts to see that there is no misuse. Nobody can say right now that it has hmm. not been misused or used. So as the law, uh, as the you know cases come up, it becomes the duty <coughs> of the court to get into it and see. Yes, we agree there are problems in the society. Yes, we agree there are discriminations more so in the rural areas where a uh, lot of cases are not even reported. Therefore, it becomes our responsibility as, as a nation to you know, uproot this kind of evil from our society. Right. Okay. Uh, before I go across to Mr. B.D. Nakhli, a quick word from you, uh, Samir. Uh, what do you feel? You know, there is uh, there are two views clearly over here. And let's just stay out of politics for a bit and talk to us. What's changed between what happened in March of 2018 and now? Because at that time, it was a Supreme uh, Court two-judge bench. This time, it's a different bench, uh, which has given two very contradictory views on the same law. As you're aware that the matter was in the Supreme Court in, on, in review against the order of the March 2018. So what today's judgment does is pu puts uh, the time back to pre-March 2018, mm. the law as it stood before the judgment came into picture. What it means essentially is that now there will be no preliminary investigation. There is no prior sanction required for any arrest to be made under the Act, which was the, which was the position even before the Supreme Court judgment. Right. So the clock has been set right. It has been set to the moment where it was before the March 2018 judgment came in. All right. Uh, thanks for putting it uh, so clearly. Mr. B.D. Nakhvi, uh, what's the reaction back in Lucknow? Like I said, uh, we haven't heard anything from Mayavati till now. What's the feeling about what happened today in court, sir? Uh, in fact, uh, there are subtle realities in, the, in our society. In our society, there is a discrimination against the weaker section, especially the scheduled caste people. It is also a reality that there has been a misuse of this law. You know, I've been judge for 30 years. I've, I, I've seen uh, that there was a misuse, but but Honorable Supreme Court has taken this stand that uh, there's no justification to dilute the law. Now, today, the Supreme Court has realized that... Hmm. Let us not dilute, dilute the law. That is the point. Because after the dilution, we saw there were <coughs> uh, children uh, were beaten up. Uh, they, they were beaten to death. We saw uh, other kinds of social discrimination. The point is that there is a special mindset of the people that they do not ready to grant equality to the Shilukas people. It is also reality. But, you know, there are certain segments of society. The problem is that the application of law in India is, is a very different uh, game together, you know. 
there are certain societies, there are certain groups, there are certain villages where, where the Shulkas are dominating the scene now. But there are certain areas where uh, still they are facing the same hardship which they used to oh, face before the uh, independence of this country. It's, it's so unfortunate, you know. But law is a social engineering. As, uh, you know, then our Supreme Court has really laid down a law that cannot be criticized, that should not be criticized right. on that score. But, but there was upheaval uh, in April uh, among the Shiluka people. They revolted. Uh, they just uh, uh, showed their anger against the dilution of law, you know. But now let us see how, how the things will turn. Naturally, the government is trying to appease, uh, rather, rather uh, satisfy uh, Shiluka people because the, uh, our present government has not given a, a, that representation to the government. In the UP government, there are only four Shiluka uh, ministers, you know. In, in the central government, uh, they have not given their due representation. So the political fight is on. You know, okay. Uh, and the, the, and On the representation the, question, Mr. B.D. Yes. Nakhvi, I can I can show you that when it comes to the SC's representation in the Council of Ministers, yes. Yes. from 2014, yes. it's been above 10 percent. Yes. Under yes. Manmohan Singh's government uh, in 2009, it was 0.86 percent. And before that, in the Atal Bihari Vajpayee government, it was again 10 percent. Under Rajiv Gandhi, it was 3.67 percent. So if you look at these numbers, I think it goes... Uh, Contrary to what you're saying, but very quickly, do, uh, Dr. Kaushal Pawar, you want to come in, then I'll go to Mr. Tawseef, Advocate Tawseef. I was going to ask you 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 to आप शिवपुरी में दो बच्चों को सिर्फ इसलिए मार देते हैं पीट पीट के क्योंकि वो वॉशरूम कर रहे थे क्या ये मिसयूज है आप मुझे बताना चाहेंगे कि दुलना दुलना कांड में खैरलाल जी में हरियाणा के हर एक हिस्से में महाराष्ट्र में गुजरात में यूपी में इतने सारे मर्डर सरेआम होते हैं जिसकी कोई भी किसी भी तरह की कोई सुनवाई नहीं होती सिवाय फाइलों में बंद हो जाती है क्या ये मिसयूज है मैं सिर्फ नकवी साहब आपसे ये जानना चाहती हूं कि क्या आपके पास कोई आंकड़ा है दलितों को आपको लगता है आज की मिसयूज कर सकते हैं वो किसी लाख आप उन्हें जवाब देने दें यस मिस्टर बीडी नकवी यस यू नो माय सिस्टर आस्किंग मी अबाउट द डाटा यू नो आई हैव बीन जज फॉर 30 इयर्स आई हैव बीन स्पीकिंग फॉर द शुल्कास पीपल यू नो आई एम स्पीकिंग फॉर यू आई एम जस्ट टेलिंग दैट there is not a proper representation for the people. Sir, you know, but, reality but, but inkar nahi kar sakte. Agar aapne do aadmi ko yes. fund de bhi diya hoga, to aap samaj ke charitra ko nahi bada sakte. Because the people get money. The people get money. You know, after that, there is compromise. I can't agree with you. 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 लॉज है जिनका मिस यूज होता है बट बीडी नकवी को अपना जवाब देने दे हाँ यस यू नो आई आई बीन जज पर थर्टी इयर्स आई एम जस्ट गिव यू मेनी सेंसेस बिकॉज़ सर्टेन पीपल मिसप्ले यू नो दैट प्रोविजन आफ्टर दैट द बिक्टिम गेट मनी आफ्टर दैट देस कंप्रोमाइज इन मेनी केसेस व्हेन द व्हेन द व्हेन द मनी इज गिव So right yes, there, you have that advantage, law. which hopefully, by the Supreme Court's order, we can do away with. Advocate Tawseef Khan, please come in. Your opening comments, uh, reactions to what you've heard till now. No, son, it is a matter of shame for us all Indians that even in 21st century, a certain group of people, a certain caste of people are uh, still, still uh, face discrimination, are still face untouchability. Such evils of society still exist and it is being endorsed that such evils do exist. It is being endorsed by the highest court of the land. It is a complete matter of shame for all of us. We must, and, and for the government as well. I want to ask a question. Government has come up with this uh, concept of Swachh Bharat, very good, clean the road, clean the house, very good. 
what about cleaning the mind of the people why don't you run a program about cleaning the mind of the people in their mind why should a, a, a people coming from a certain family think that others are less human that others are untouchable that others do not have the equal right when constitution of india has has um, explicitly said that untouchability is, um, is barred that it is a crime and that it should not be practiced in india why do people think that they uh, are superior when actually they indulge into so they, they when they when they keep a thought which is such uh, which which is such petty and which is such inferior i have a very direct question why is and, and uh, my question is with the bjp spokesperson here sir would you not agree that the government right. of india and that all social organizations everywhere should run a program to fight this uh, evil uh, together and to 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 free i think that's a very valid thought because at the end of the day mr gopal krishna agarwal it's about changing the mindset we we can talk about a law we can implement the strictest possible laws but until and unless we change the way we think and we truly start thinking like uh, you know everybody treating everybody as an equal citizen in the country all these laws really mean little mr gopal krishna agarwal it was your party leaders who during the election campaign said that if muslims don't vote for me then i can't guarantee your welfare the issue is very clear if the mindset is changed nothing is required but the human situations are like that and the country situation at present is like that that there is there were atrocities created on certain sections of the society and after even after so so a long period of independence our large part of our sections of the society are not fully empowered there is you see there is a uh, issue with the women empowerment also 50% uh, 50, uh, uh, from our uh, women gender is not fully empowered and many places they don't find their rights Mr. Gopal you see Krishna in Jammu and Kashmir also again. their rights were not equal are you asking so the citizens to believe to that political issues. parties actually want the citizens to be empowered i just quoted a statement from the lok sabha 2019 campaign from menaka gandhi i'm going to name her as well then today home minister amit shah while in bengal he again talked about citizenship amendment bill he talked about protecting the hindus the christians the jains but he very conveniently excluded muslims from his statement yes. so are you asking the country to repose faith on the government no, which itself uh, is discriminating sanak sana khan you have to look into the context where amit shah ji talked about that amit shah ji talked about in reference to nrc there was a talk about the people who from the neighboring countries particularly hindu sikhs jains bauds who are being uh, completely discriminated and completely annihilated in pakistan uh, at the time of independence the hindu population was 31% now it is less than uh, 2% there are countries like malaysia etc where the right of uh, last rights is not there for hindus so that kind of discrimination or okay, in fact let's come back to the happened, topic that we are debating okay my, let's talk about the sc st sir yes so in hmm. in that sir, context this, we this, need citizenship so amendment reflect, but so we are not reflect. saying that the muslims in india those who are the citizens of india why the congress say that they have the first right on the national resources sir, uh, you, why is this kind of requirement there I, then why sir, don't they a, talk about uniform too. civil code why there is a discrimination sir, on why they don't support that uh, uh, banning of agree? triple talaq sir, do you so agree the do you agree mindset that, of the uh, ruling uh, people before like was a of part of discrimination of and creating a vote bank yes no? that was communalism worst kind of communalism in the name of secularism that they were perpetuating <laughs> so if there is a historical wrong you have to correct it through laws if everybody in the mind uh, and actions right, everybody right. is uniform okay i i take, no that, I take that i take that but 
but there are more questions that I have for you, uh, Mr. Agarwal. We have to take a very quick break right now, but we continue this discussion on the other side. So please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We continue to talk about uh, the law for the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, the Prevention of Atrocities Act, which was diluted last year, but the Supreme Court has uh, had a rethink on this decision and decided to bring back the stringent provisions, which mean uh, that uh, there will be no preliminary inquiry that will be needed before registering an FIR, before making an arrest, empowering in a way uh, the downtrodden in the country. We continue to talk about this, but let's get into specifics now. We've been, uh, we largely have a fairly uh, good understanding of what each of the panelists think, but Mr. Deshratan Nikam, let me start with you now. Uh, very clearly tell us, I know these stringent provisions you say uh, are a positive step now, going back to the law as existed in its present form, giving back it its teeth. Uh, how do you think it's going to help? I want very specific points. You say the provisions are needed. Uh, elaborate. See, the fact remains that we have social discrimination. We also have that gap. Uh, between the SCs and the other categories. And that gap, you know, is, is sometimes is misused by the position of power uh, because that power equations is, is, is a very material thing out here. So once, you know, you do not allow that leverage to the police so that they can take a decision uh, on behalf of a powerful, powerful person, and then, you know, may not even register an FIR. So that aspect has been done away with. Now, uh, let me come to the social aspect mm -hmm. of this, what will happen. Now, uh, we all saw in 2019 election where, uh, uh, let us take the example of UP, where everybody thought that uh, Dalits would vote as en masse to a particular party. But that did not happen. People transcended that boundary and then voted for a particular party in the Lok Sabha elections and that party uh, which is BJP came with huge numbers. So that is the social engineering that we want. The SC is has not to be used as a political bank manipulated by a particular caste based parties and one has to get out of it. Right. Now the focus has to be on development of these sections. Now it is not only the responsibility of the BJP. Let me, let me put out some statistics across, for you Mr. Uh, Deshrat and Nikam. According to National Spectrum. Crime Records Bureau, the latest data that we have, the Supreme Court, uh, you know, 15 to 16 percent of all cases registered under the Act are closed after preliminary inquiry by the police. The rest of the cases, which are about 75 percent, acquittal of the accused in most of these cases for lack of evidence. Uh, despite the law, how do you suppose, do you think the law and a change in mindset and the initiative to really work for the downtrodden community is something that is the need of the hour, apart, of course, uh, from this law as you back? First thing, first thing, the awareness in the society will, you know, make people to come out and approach the police one. Second, these changes in law will also prevent people, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, not registering, police not registering the FIR. Secondly, one, one has to see the overall scenario in which now the people will come out and earlier where they were thinking they were afraid that their cases might not be registered. Now at the same time, the issue of misuse also comes into the picture. Out of 17, 15, 17 percent which you are saying, the cases which were not registered, there could be hmm. some, some percentage that analysis has to be done where the uh, 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 law was misused. Therefore, you know, even today, even if that provision has been taken away, there are provisions in Indian Penal Code, if somebody f files a false complaint, that person can be penalized in f and, and on oath says something, right. uh, then, then he can be punished for perjury also in court. So the existing laws are there, there are checks and balances that have to be utilized and police also has to be sensitized. That is also very important and it is also the duty of all the political parties not to, you know, treat uh, or manipulate and only use this as a vote bank during elections. Now you have to go beyond that. And that is where the sense of responsibility has to come in all political parties. And we saw in 2019 when, when Dalits, you know, uh, left that Dalit identity and uh, went on to larger issues of development, their own welfare and the welfare of the community and the nation as a whole. 
right okay okay i get that a uh, couple of important points that you mentioned there i am tempted to go back to mr gopal krishna agarwal but i'll hold on uh, for now samir uh, your comments on uh, the misuse because when i started talking to you you said there will be misuse but there is also a stringent law now in place which is back in place to help the scsts coming back to your first point that why despite the stringent law why there are there is such a low conviction rate mm. uh, son of essentially the low conviction rate is not to be attributed to the law itself a low conviction rate can be seen in the country with respect to every other law for the simple reason that there are delayed trials what right. the, what this judgment of today will do is essentially because the scst act provides for a expedited trial the trial has to be finished preferably within 2 months so this will enable otherwise earlier what used to happen was a preliminary inquiry would anyways push the hmm. registration of the period of the registration for an fir beyond the period of 2 months and consequently the trial would keep getting delayed and the witnesses lose interest by the time the actual trial happens also what what is hap what happens in these cases is invariably these cases are against strong powerful people so they invariably have access to better legal defense systems across the country That's because right. of which the conviction rate is not had as high as it could be considering the stringent nature of the law as such right so how did how can that be checked because there is no provision because most of the cases that you see now the the public servants also come under the purview of this particular act and we do understand that the scsts are underprivileged uh, and you know the the powerful people can sort of swing the cases also in some of these cases or force them uh, to take the cases back try and influence them uh, are there any checks and balances in place under this law unfortunately the only the only solution i see is that the courts have to be more proactive in separating the grain from the chaff the courts have to take a proactive role in ensuring that no unnecessary adjournments are given the de uh, the delay is not attributed to the lawyers or for that matter procedural delays are not allowed to take place hmm. and a uh, conclusion is reached in the trial that's right okay uh, i want to come to you mr bd nakvi now what's your opinion on this very specific uh, you know, uh, oh, will the yes. provisions help oh, if yes, yes uh, why and if no why you talked about uh, no statistics available which is a fact uh, but there is enough enough news reports to suggest that discrimination happens in various parts of the country almost on a daily basis you know social discrimination is a reality in our society the powerful people discriminate the weaker section it is a reality but the fight is on the honorable supreme court has uh, very finally uh, extended the scavenging by the shilka people you know one fact is that uh, it has not been being modernized so far second the, the social discrimination at the social level the point is that at this if we analyze the trial you know first stage is the fir second is the inquiry the third is the stage in the court the evidence you know in our society people are just inclined to file uh, an fir in which they just um, include other people you know uh, if a one person has committed an offense they go on uh, filing a fir against few other aiding persons aiding other person the fir so they, they the first job of the police to to uh, just uh, make a fair inquiry after that the, the, it is the duty of the court what we are saying that the conviction rate is low what it has been noted that 15 15% why it is so why it is so? because in most of the cases people make a compromise it is also a healthy act you know in a in a village where people are living together no but so as samir was pointing case, out mr know, nakvi but, the conviction but, but, rate across yeah. all sorts of cases in the country is It's low whether you talk about criminal cases you talk about the uh, cases because of rape society, the conviction rate is low people are inclined for compromises but when in it if the people if the victim party makes a compromise but the compromise should be a fair one you know he should not that that, that should not be under duress so uh, people make compromises hmm. Uh, hmm. and they, they and after the compromise hmm. the court has to uh, pass a judgment of the acquittal that that a fact you know but 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 the, as for the law is concerned that the law should be reasonable they are, they are making law stringent will not solve the problem as we see in rape you know so much in this situation so even then the minors the children have been raped you know we are seeing why it is so because 
law has lost its reasonability. No, but how would a reasonable law help unless, okay, you know, let me present the counter view which we've been talking about. If the law is not as stringent, you think, when an aam aadmi is not taken seriously in a thana, sir, how do you think a Dalit is going to be treated when he goes to file a complaint? So what's the other way? Rape is murder, you know, because the people vanishes the evidence. So it is very important. Yes, Mr. Gopal Krishna Garwal, I, I see you. I'm going to come to you in a bit. Hmm. Hmm. So people are just committing rape after that. They are killing the victims. That, that's very really unfortunate because we made law very stringent. What I'm just throwing my point that is our legislators, our parliament should realize that should be a reasonable law. Reasonable law. In our country, we have got a reformative theory, we have got a retributive theory, we have can got I, a, a, a a other theories, you know. So we have to make a law business. That's all. Hmm. Whether it is right. against law, against so you're saying you, uh, you, the, the law must be reasonable. Before I go across to Tosif and uh, Mr. Gopal Krishna Agarwal, just one second. Dr. Kaushal Pawar wants to come in. I think she wants to counter you. Dr. Kaushal Pawar also, apart from re responding to what you've heard till now, talk to us about the politics of it all. Can we believe when uh, you know we hear statements like we should stop treating Dalits? Uh, as a vote bank, is that even possible? Because the Dalits uh, are spread across the length and breadth of the country and they do form a very important, uh, you know, vote bank for the politicians. And this is how the politicians have been treating the community uh, all this while. Look, video viral और वो चैनल पे चलाया गया था बाकायदा उसमें एक ऑफिसर जो दलित दलित होता है बहुत मतलब उनका बॉस होता है और उसका जो कर्मचारी है वो अप्रकाश्त होता है मेरे पास वीडियो है सर आप उसको एविडेंस के रूप में देख सकते हैं उसको किस तरीके से ये जैसे गिलास है पानी थूक डाल के उसमें तब अपने ऑफिसर को देता है मैं मुझे ये बताइए कि आपको क्या लगता है कि वो जब उसने समझौता किया होगा वो म्यूचुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग से होगा हम सब जानते हैं किस तरीके से समझौते यहाँ पे होते हैं कैसे दबाव डाला जाता है न सिर्फ वो भुगतता है बल्कि उसका पूरा परिवार इस ऐसे सदमे से गुजरता है कि सुसाइड तक पहुँचता है हम सब जानते हैं कि डॉक्टर पायल की जिस तरीके से हत्या की गई वो कष्ट के आधार पे थी हम सब जानते हैं कि किस तरीके से लाखों नहीं सैकड़ों उदाहरण करोड़ों उदाहरण हमारी आबादी के सामने जो रजिस्टर्ड तक नहीं होते इवन जब एफ दर्ज करवाने के लिए जाते हैं जो जाता है उसी को बंद कर दिया जाता है हम ऐसे भारत में रह रहे हैं जहां पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज के नुमाइंदे भी डिस्क्रिमिनेशन फेस करते हैं और वो पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज के दबाव में आके वो अलग बात है कि वो किसी भी तरह का विरोध नहीं कर पाते रिसेंटली आपके सामने उदाहरण है राष्ट्रपति जी माननीय राष्ट्रपति जी जो प्रथम नागरिक है उनको टेम्पल में घुसने नहीं दिया गया अभी बीजेपी के मंत्री को घुसने नहीं दिया गया था ये सब क्या है अभी नवरात्र शुरू हुए हैं पहला नवरात्र था ये ये जो आपका मंदिर है बनारस में उसमें बाकायदा लगाया गया कि शुद्रों को यहाँ जाने का अधिकार नहीं सर मैं सिर्फ इतना कहना चाहती हूँ कि जिस तरीके से आप ये कह के हल्का करने की कोशिश करते हैं कि बहुत सारे मतलब रोम मतलब इस, आ, उस गलत इस्तेमाल होता है एक्ट का मुझे तो अभी तक ये नहीं समझ आया आप ये बताइए क्या आपको यकीन होता है जब किसी पॉलिटिकल पार्टी से कोई प्रवक्ता कहता है कि दलित को हम वोट बैंक की तरह नहीं यूज करते हैं हम सच में चाहते हैं कि दलित जो है जो एस सी है उनका उद्धार हो वो सोसाइटी में आगे बढ़े ये ज़्यादा एवेन्यूज़ मिले ये उसी तरीके से है जब हमारे यूनिवर्सिटीज़ में पढ़े लिखे लोग जो प्रोफेसर्स हैं और, और बहुत डॉक्टर्स हैं पढ़ी लिखी तब आपकी बात कर रही हूँ मैं आम जनता की छोड़ दीजिए जो हमारी क्रीम है वो जब ये कहती है कि नहीं नहीं मैं तो करता ही नहीं मैं तो आपके साथ खाना खाता हूँ मैं तो आपके साथ शेयर करता हूँ सब कुछ इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि वो पहले ही ये कह के ही बता रहा है कि मैं मैं कैसा हूँ और मैं कैसा व्यवहार करता हूँ हमें उदाहरण तो तो हम चुनावों से पहले देखते हैं कि जो नेता है तो आपके लिए जा रहे हैं दलित के घर पे खाना खा रहे हैं गोपाल कृष्ण अग्रवाल यूनो गोपाल कृष्ण अग्रवाल एट द टाइम ऑफ दसेंबली इलेक्शन इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन immense anger in the states of Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan because of the dilution of the SCST Act and the yes, BJP yes, somewhere you know there was a sense on the ground that the BJP uh, is on the back foot because of the dilution I tell you here I would like to mention three points one thing is that though the democracy and politics ultimate aim is to rise above caste and religion politics 
but at times till we have achieved the final idealistic society goal this uh, vote bank uh, uh, empowers certain sections of the uh, societies which have not got the uh, actual rights that they uh, equal rights that they deserve there has been atrocities there are historical reasons for that till that final ideal situation is arrived these kind of wo uh, uh, right. empowered groups help into r proper right hmm. and equality etc this is also has to be kept in mind second point i would like to mention is that when you say that there is a strong law this strong law in itself act as a deterrent if there is a strong law then only many people will be uh, deterred right. to act on into that line of actions that's also a very important therefore we want draconian strong laws so that the people uh, are not uh, inclined to act into certain uh, way of uh, actions the third important point i would like to mention is that there, there there is a chance of misuse of certain laws that doesn't so, uh, say that the law should not be implemented the every law has a chance of right. misuse Impo there is no the possibility right. of misuse of any law does not require that the law should not be made stringent and strong the, the, there is a preventive aspect of strong laws also so we have seen that uh, laws which have some discrimination which may seem to be discriminate and help certain sections of the society has helped into their empowerment that's only the way through which hmm. unequal or uh, inequality in the society is is taken I care of i think that the responsibility so increases the demanding, uh, on the on those for whom the law is created democracy part, and for of course the government and the respective state governments to see to it that the law is upheld in its true essence uh, okay i want to move to the closing comments right now starting with you advocate tawseef khan uh, would you like to make a comment and the simple question is uh, is this absolutely the need of the hour and should it be amended perhaps at a later stage after perhaps we've achieved some basic sense of uh, you know treating all communities equally and in that time do you think this could become a crutch for the SCST community your thoughts no the SCST prevention uh, of atrocities act is is the need of the hour and uh, um, the supreme court by recalling it has given uh, back uh, the truth that it deserves now what is very very surprising and astonishing is that some people are trying to quote history to justify what is happening in present how on earth can people then move out and move ahead of these uh, evil uh, practices which which have been prevalent in indian society for thousands of years ago no sign will tell you i mean uh, the, so the some these people who talk about who, who defend uh, you know the 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 caste system in the religion they also refer to science sometimes and they they try to uh, say that look our theory has been uh, in a way endorsed by science please tell me which science says that a person belonging to a certain family is superior to uh, to person belonging to to other family right. uh, on the basis of religion on the basis right. of uh, physical appearance on the basis of caste this is disgusting the the what we need today is for all people all sections of people all sections of politicians and actors right. and everyone hmm. to come forward and you know uh, spread awareness in the society that this untouchability is absolutely must absolutely i'll People quickly go across to mr deshrath and nikam uh, i want to take in comments from all my panelists mr deshrath and nikam same question uh, let it, let us be very clear caste system is not only prevalent among hindus but among muslims and christians also and they they use that kind of thing very effectively so let us make that very clear it exists in a society it is pan india phenomena second let right. us be very clear what was the situation in 1947 what is the situation now yes there is a marked improvement in that but a lot is to be done third if there if there are temples which prevent people from the scheduled caste community to uh, bar their entry then these are not temples now another suggestion which i am giving is why the delay and all this there is no caste system in islam yes 
but let's let's please not get into that we are talking about the SCST provincial protocols act it is in practice it is Look practice up. it is let's practice let's not get into Sayed, religion Sayed Sheikhs and, and, and so i am giving the practical reality of the country no, no, that sir, is i am only saying that, it may not be there mind. in your scriptures but it is practiced in india there's a lot of so mind. so let us be very clear now suggestions that i am giving that the problem of uh, investigation is a paramount problem in india because you have to you know separate investigation from law and order a police man who does a law and order duty is not competent to you know investigate so that has to be separated in the department of right. police so that proper investigation takes place now you have to sensitize the police and if hmm. all does not work we have a well laid down judicial process where a person can approach court through legal aid and otherwise so these are the efforts that are available and they have to be increased many fold also Okay, okay. Mr. Bidhi Nakvi. Yes, caste is a reality in India, you know. And after, and the caste is, in fact, the caste has fought against the Muslims. The caste has fought against Islam, you know. It's a reality. And after the conversion to the, you know, Islam, even the caste is a reality. That's a fact. We have to accept it. But, but it's a phenomenon of our uh, country. But in our country, Ambedkarites are fighting for their rights. Uh, against all the forces in the country, and I will just give, uh, speak of one couplet for them. Vak likhega kahani ek nee mazboon ki, vak likhega kahani ek nee mazboon ki. Mulko yaro zarurat hai tumare jibun ki. Hamne baashinde is bol ke to laze mein hai yehi. Hamko karna hai hifazat kanun ki. We have to uphold the law. We have to uphold the. Yes. Absolutely, and the onus lies on us. Uh, Samir, a quick word from you. Right, right, right to equality is one of the most fundamental constitutional rights guaranteed to every hmm. citizen. Till the time there is discrimination, be it either on caste or religion or any other lines, such stringent laws will be required because deterrence goes a long way in ensuring that the mindset of the society is eventually changed. Yes, Dr. Pawar. बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर ने कहा था कि शिक्षित बनो संगठित हो संघर्ष करो दलितों को आज संगठित होने की जरूरत है ऐसी एट्रोसिटी के खिलाफ चाहे वो मॉब लॉन्चिंग के रूप में हो सोशल हो पॉलिटिकल हो किसी भी तरह के इवन कल्चरली हो बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर का फॉलोअर का बनने की जरूरत है प्रैक्टिकल में और अगर आप इसी तरीके से रहे तो कोई भी ला ले आइए आप, आप हम जानते हैं कि ये जो आज आंदोलन की जीत हुई है वो बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर के सिपाहियों की जीत है सरकार ने इसका इसको पुनर्याचिका दाखिल इसलिए की थी क्योंकि उनके ऊपर दबाव दो अप्रैल जैसा था जितनी भी एट्रोसिटी कमेंट होती है बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर के कदमों पर चलते हुए संगठित होने की जरूरत है जब तक दलित संगठित नहीं होंगे फॉरवर्ड लुकिंग स्टेशन भी बताइए ठीक है पॉलिटिक्स से इसको अलग कर देते हैं इससे एक फॉरवर्ड लुकिंग आप आगे क्या देखती है जो लॉ अब आया है इससे आगे क्या होगा क्या ये पॉजिटिव होगा क्या इसका इम्पैक्ट नेगेटिव भी हो सकता है देखिए पॉजिटिव ही होगा नेगेटिव हम नहीं मान सकते नेगेटिव अगर कहा जा सकता है तो इस रूप में होगा कि जितनी भी हमारी जो पुलिस फोर्सेज है एक माइंडसेट को लेकर चलती हैं जितनी भी हमारे जो लोकल बॉडीज हैं जो अपने आप को जो एक तरह से सामंती व्यवहार करती हैं right. अगर वो इस तरीके का करेगी तो एफ आई तक ही नहीं पहुंचेगा at the end of the day this law is about empowering the downtrodden and the onus lies on you and me the community the government to see to it that the law is implemented in its earnest and we have to get rid of the discrimination ill treatment injustice that these communities have been facing let's uh, wait and watch and hope for the very best thank you all very much for joining me on this edition of india head at 9 i'm sana khan thanks so much for tuning in